Collins. I'm a sustainability intern for SGA and also the secretary of Biodiesel Club. Today we're here with Biodiesel in our lab. Um, Biodiesel started with the initiative to recycle waste vegetable oils from campus services and recycle it into a usable energy for the campus transportation. Not only is this recycling and reducing waste, but this energy is much more clean burning and reduces our emissions greatly. Let's take a look in the lab. Okay, right, so I'm going to show you a general process of how we make biodiesel. In order to make biodiesel, you need waste vegetable oil. Um, so today we're using four and a half liters of waste vegetable oil. You need to mix that with methanol and a catalyst in order for the reaction to happen. Um, so you take 20% of the volume of the waste vegetable oil that you're using, and that's going to be your methanol. So we calculate this by saying 20% times the amount of waste vegetable oil equals 0.9 liters. So we'll be using 0.9 liters of methanol. You also need a catalyst, and this is just a general recipe for any type of waste vegetable oil. We're using just general waste vegetable oil that has not been used for cooking. Therefore, we need 7 grams per liter of the waste vegetable oil that we're using. So we'll need 31.5 grams of KOH, which is our catalyst. You need to mix the methanol and catalyst, since the methanol is a liquid and the catalyst is a solid. We're doing that over here, which I'll show you in a second, and then we're going to mix it with our biodiesel in the reactor. So this is our, our catalyst, KOH. It comes in a solid form. In order to mix this with the biodiesel and make it effective, we need to mix it with the liquid, our methanol, which is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this in. And we check our temperature. Normally in a biodiesel process, you'd like it to ideally be 50 to 60 degrees temperature running. So we preheat our methanol to this temperature so that when we add it, it doesn't decrease the effect. So we'll wait for this to stir and mix up properly, and then we'll go ahead and add it to our process. So here we are with our small scale design. This is our reactor. It's stirring at a moderate pace, um, and we currently have the waste vegetable oil inside. So what we're gonna do is add this methanol in. We add about half at a time so that the reaction has a chance to catch up and mix properly before the methanol evaporates. So now that we've mi mixed our methanol with our biodiesel, it should take about an hour and a half for this to fully react. We have to make sure that it's about 135 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 to 60 degrees Celsius during the reaction. So it's very important to keep a check on our temperature. Um, and once it's fully reacted, we'll begin to filter it. Now that our biodiesel is finished, we need to drain off the waste, which is glycerin, on the bottom. You'll be able to see the waste because it's a different color than the biodiesel. It's a bit darker. So we open this valve and let it drain off into a waste bucket. And once that's finished, we open the second valve and drain it through our filters. This is our first filter filled with um, a resin which extracts impurities from the biodiesel. Once it goes through this filter, it's pumped over to the second filter which extracts a different type of impurity. And once it comes off there, it washes into our wash bucket, which is our final product. So here we are with our intermediate and final products. This is what came off of the reactor before we filtered it, and this is the final product, which is used in buses around campus. This is a cleaner burning fuel with less emissions than that of regular diesel. Thank you for joining me in the Biodiesel Lab today. This is our small scale design, and the Biodiesel Club hopes to upscale it so that we can produce lots of biodiesel to use around campus. Um, if you'd like more information about biodiesel or to join the club and help out, please go to our website on myUMBC. Just search biodiesel, and there's a bunch of information articles, videos, and lots of resources. Thanks again.